This video is brought to you by MachinableWax.com, the number one manufacturer of machinable wax. One of the many advantages of using machinable wax is the ability to reclaim and recycle the used material. Now before you attempt this procedure, make sure that you have and use all the necessary safety equipment, including gloves and safety glasses. During the recycling process, you'll be working with hot wax, and if it happens to get on your skin or in your eyes, well, it will be a very unpleasant experience. Depending on the size of the pieces that you'll need to cast, you'll want to create a mold. Aluminum works great. If you'll be working with small pieces, you might even consider using a simple aluminum baking tin coated with a non-stick surface. There are two ways to cast machinable wax. For a small amount of wax, it's possible to place the material in a mold and heat the mold and wax together in an oven. This usually works best only if you're working with small pieces. The better way is to melt the wax in an oven and then pour the heated wax into the mold. You'll also get better results if you warm the mold slightly before pouring the wax into it. The first step will be to determine how much material that you'll need. Plan to cast a slightly larger size than what you'll be expecting for the finished size. Machinable wax will shrink a bit from its melted state to when it becomes a solid again. As much as 7% shrinkage is reasonable. To determine the amount of wax that you'll need for your project, calculate the volume of the piece by multiplying the desired length by the width and the height to determine how many cubic inches of material that you'll need. Then divide the total number of cubic inches by 28.8 .8, and the result will be the amount of material in pounds that it will take to create the finished size. Our machinable wax will begin to soften at around 230 degrees Fahrenheit. At 260 to 270 degrees, it should pour with a viscosity slim, similar to motor oil or syrup. For the best results, initially heat the wax up slowly to around 270 degrees Fahrenheit until you have a nice even melt, and then increase the temperature to 280 to 290 degrees for the final pour. Don't rush the process and overheat the wax for any reason. If you get smoke at all, it's too hot. And don't ever heat the wax over 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Consider using a silicon spray or other release agent on your mold if it doesn't already have a non-stick surface. Once the wax is melted, pour it into a mold and then remove the mold and wax to an area where it can cool. If you try to rush this part of the process, you may get some undesirable results. Covering the wax with a wooden box or suitable insulation material will help to slow down the cooling process. Depending on the size of the wax casting, you'll have to allow several hours to let the wax cool slowly to avoid warping and cracks. After the wax is thoroughly cooled, it should shrink enough to let it easily separate from the mold. After you've removed the wax block from the mold, you can remove the surface blemishes with a plane or a mill and cut it to size with a bandsaw. As long as you take care to keep the wax clean and don't overheat it in the recycling process, machinable wax can be recycled numerous times. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching.